Hi there, welcome back. Welcome back to video number two in the Nordmende Transit ATS Deluxe restoration. It turned from a single video to a series, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on your on the way you look at it. This thing is proving a lot more uh, difficult than I thought. Uh, and but it's it's being it's working well. It's it's fun. So I'm gonna carry on with the uh, with the work that needs doing. I've got quite a bit to do, a lot of alignment to do, sorting out FM sorting out the case, all that sort of stuff. Um, there are quite a few bits of alignment that uh, the instructions tell us to, to, to do. The instructions are very, very good, by the way. They're in German, but they're very, very good. So Google Translate does a great job. So if this sort of thing is interesting to you, stick around and uh, enjoy it. I've come to the conclusion that um, I would make a terrible surgeon. And that is because if a beautiful girl came onto my operating table in the emergency room with internal bleeding, but she had a little scar on her face, I think I'd probably fix the scar first, meaning she'd probably die of internal bleeding. But this is what I'm doing with this radio. I've been looking at this um, enclosure at the cabinet, and I really want to get this thing looking absolutely new. <laughs> and so I couldn't resist. I took everything apart, and it all comes apart fairly easily. This, um, this top has got three screws, one there, one there, one there. Notably different colors because that's under the black. So we've got the screws, two whites and one sort of dark gray. But that came out and I can see that um, this chrome is actually quite conveniently placed. It's placed underneath the plastic, which means that this problem here underneath where some acid has got into and I don't know how that happened because the battery leakage that I saw on the bottom plate was all at the bottom and now here we've got a similar situation this looks like acid to me like um, battery leakage to me and it's eaten up the chrome which I think you can see here inside the underneath this glass or this plexiglass so to fix that up should be quite easy. I should just be able to clean all the inside, take the old chrome out if I need to. And I've got that chrome spray paint, which I can just spray in there and it'll be a perfect finish because it um, the surface isn't the chrome, it's actually the plexiglass. So that should come out beautifully. This has got absolutely nothing wrong with it, just a bit of cleaning. And I'll do it carefully because I don't know how fixed this um, text is on here. So put that aside. These uh, grills, again, just a bit of cleaning. There's the other one. And this back one is, yeah, there's a little bit of damage on here. But again, should be quite, e quite easy to, to fix. Okay, that one is the one that's a little bit more scratched. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do on this, but I'll figure out something. I've got the um, the insiglias, which are in perfect condition. So is that one. These two side screws are where the, um, the handle fit. The handle is just fine. And then here, I've already done a bit of light sanding on here. Remember, all this is under the, the grill, but the actual wood that's visible I've done some very light sanding. This was with, um, what was it, 800 grit wet and dry sandpaper, just to smoothen out a bit, see if I can get some of those black marks off there. There was one over there that's gone. There was, oh, there's a little bit of a, a chip on here, which I'm sure I'll be able to fix. It's not a chip, it's sort of a crack. I need to fill that in. This sort of blackish mark, that's actually part of the wood. And I believe this one is as well. I'm going to try and sand it a bit more, but I think this might actually just be in the wood. So this thing will be ready pretty soon because inside, these things are just the, um, these things are riveted in, so I can't take them out. And they're not rusted, they're painted, they're spray painted brown. At first I thought it was rust. But there's nothing to do here, nothing to do here. This is all fine, I'll just clean it once I've done the sanding. And this, this part here was a, a black cardboard that went over here. I had to sort of remove that. I thought it would come off a lot easier, but it didn't. I ended up having to sort of tear it away. 
but I needed to remove that to remove the clips that hold or that held this back grill on. Again, that shouldn't be a problem. There seems to be a little bit of rust on here besides the brown paint, but that should be fixable. Something definitely leaked on here. It's sort of gone into the wood, but that shouldn't be a problem. So yeah, okay. I know what I'm going to do there with my, uh, <laughs> with the uh, beauty's face because I need to get into the internal bleeding over there. And a bit more progress to report. The tuning condenser, as you recall, was getting stuck. It's no longer getting stuck. And the reason was, as one or two of you actually mentioned, some of these fins had been bent up too far. These fins are here. This is one of, uh, one of the plates on the uh, stator, rotor, on the rotor of the tuning condenser. And both on the um, uh, oscillator section and on the front end uh, tuning section, these plates have got little gaps on there and you can actually turn them up. You can turn them up individually. In other words, each one has got various gaps and depending on which one I turn up, I can affect the capacitance at that point. So if I want to adjust the capacitance at the close to where the, the tuning condenser is fully open, then I want to adjust it as it goes in, and meshes in there. So I would adjust that one. If I want to do it more or less, you know, a bit further in, I would adjust that one. If I want to do it closer to the end, that one. And if I want, to, I want to do it right at the end, I would do that one. So you can adjust it. And this happens on the top and the bottom. And it happens on both sections of the tuning condenser. Now, somebody had really gone to town with this and they were hitting the back. In one case, they were hitting this um, copper uh, holder here. That's why we were getting that short. In another instance, another part of it was actually touching one of these uh, rot or stator plates at the bottom there. So I think I've got it all done. However, I have noticed that someone did mess with this. Somebody got this to the point where it was getting stuck here. So they thought, okay, let me change the dial. Because what happens is, as I turn there, this thing is going right over the top, you see? So this thing needs to be shifted across here somewhat. And you can do that. Obviously we need to align it, but we can do that till it's fully meshed and it's not hitting the end there. Now there's a, as I said to you, there's a mark here. There are various marks over here. So when we do the alignment, we'll be able to correct that. Let's see how far it goes the other way now. That's more like it. See, now it's fully open and that's at the end. Now I need to just check where the, this thing is difficult to see, but I think it's over here. There's a little dot over there, which I think is where you're supposed to put it. Uh, it's about there, but I'll have to do it when I do the alignment. So I've got that sorted out. Okay. One other thing I've figured out is the antenna. This uh, antenna socket is actually exactly the same as the rod antenna at the back here. It literally goes from the rod to there. Then it goes into a lot of switching and part of the switching happens down at the bottom there on that uh, plug that plugs into the, the radio unit. Because when you plug it into the radio unit, you stop using these antennas and you use the car antenna, which is wired into the socket of that said plug. But this one is good enough because I needed someone, I needed somewhere to use um, just easily. And the easiest way to plug in my mini whip, connect my mini whip is onto here. So that's good. Okay. The other question was, does the um, medium wave and long wave use that antenna? It does. It uses the rod antenna as well. The spherite antenna over here is used for long wave and medium wave, but it does connect into that antenna as well, because when I do switch off the mini whip, this thing receives nothing. I think it's sort of a mixture. They've, they've put the two together. I'm actually wondering whether that antenna at the bottom there, down there, coming from the radio, I wonder if that would be a better one when you want to receive. I might check that. I might check that because there, there's an antenna switch, uh, antenna connector from there 
into that switch that I showed you and that goes to the antenna circuit. But yeah, so I've solved that mystery as well. The other mystery is a problem, the FM tuning. When I select FM, I'm still getting that problem. Now, this thing is getting stuck and I've realized it's actually getting stuck at the end there because the, at that end, because the spring that's supposed to keep this whole thing in tension is actually hitting the end. There's a little um, pivot point, one of those little, what do they call them, pulleys at the end there, and the spring is actually hitting the end. So again, this whole thing, the tuning condenser, the location, the position of this dial is completely messed up. So I'm going to have to look at that, but there's still the question of it getting stuck, and it might be another spring somewhere. I'm going to have to look at it more closely because it's, well, yeah, it's still got me. But yeah, okay, that's what I've been doing so far, and I've been doing something else. This guy has been sanded. It has been filled. This is just one coat. I've filled the little gap we had over here. I'm not touching it because I think it's still not completely dry from the first coat. There was another little gap over there which I filled. Let me put this down. And there were a couple of sort of, you know, not scratches but indentations on this back end here. That's now been done and this thing is looking absolutely beautiful. So let me put that aside and show you the rest. The dial, no mystery there. It was just a question of cleaning, again, very carefully. Didn't want to take any of the labeling off. I'm not sure if it comes off, but I'm not risking it. These brass holders for the, um, for the handle polished beautifully. So this is looking really good. The brass on these just polishes well, there's not a problem. This thing, uh, there's a little bit of a scratch there and I cannot get rid of it. There's no way that I'm going to be able to get rid of that. So I'm going to have to live with that, unfortunately, but it's been cleaned, it's been washed, scrubbed, dried, so that's ready. This little guy is ready to go in as well. This is the one that, uh, this is the worst one. It's got some scratches on there. And again, I can't get rid of them. The rest has been cleaned, washed, dried. So that's perfect. But let me show you the main thing. This guy. Okay. What did I do here? I covered this whole section here because when I started washing this thing, I realized that the chrome that you see on the underside is not really chrome. It's chrome paint. On this section here and the uh, acid or whatever had got into one of these corners and eaten away that paint so I managed to clean it all a lot of the chrome paint came off I've now covered the areas which are the dial glass two sections here that don't get paint and I spray the whole thing with that chrome paint so I think this thing is going to be perfect certainly those unsightly marks that you're seeing here hopefully will disappear but this thing came out, was coming out fantastically, so I'm really chuffed. So the next thing is I'm going to have to sort out what's happening with that FM tuning. I've sorted out the AM, the condenser getting stuck issue, which as I said requires, uh, will require, definitely will require uh, alignment. And now the FM one has got me a little bit more confused, but I'll get there. I'll get there. Let me get to it. This is, uh, this is a great way to spend your confinement. Uh, we're still confined. My wife is still not uh, completely clear of the COVID. It's very mild um, symptoms, but we're still stuck at home. Fortunately, I've got stuff to do. Okay. I'm going to set the bias of the output transistors and I've checked the instructions. They tell us to switch to FM. They tell us to put the volume on low. In fact, it's off at the moment. But it's volume on low, no input signal, and then they tell us where we're supposed to measure the current. Now, on the schematic, they show us a little uh, bridge. It's a solder bridge you have to do. 
But on here, I'll show you. You look at this here. If you follow these contacts on the end here, you got one, two, three, and four is that solder bridge. So three and four. There was actually a little wire wired across that goes through to the other side and soldered across. I've cut it and I'm going to put my um, milliameter across these two points. I want to measure the current across them when I switch this on with no signal and lowest volume possible. Okay, I need to measure 10 milliamps and I can adjust it with a trim pot that I can access through here that's uh, resistor 181. But let's see what we get and we'll see what we can adjust to. So I'll switch it on. We want 10 milliamps. I've got the volume on minimum and it's low. So I need to get this to 10 milliamps. Wrong way. Do it slowly because it does sort of shift. Very sensitive this. That's as good as it's going to get. So that's 10 milliamps. That is now set. I can switch it off. And I can now just permanently solder that wire across there again, which is what I'll do. Next, they tell us to adjust the current through transistor 6 uh, using R119 and we need 1.3 milliamps which means you measure 1.3 volts across resistor R120. And on the, uh, they say measuring point two, and they show us measuring point two. So what I've done is I've soldered two little wires to measuring point two. I've got the voltmeter across there. And what you have to adjust is R119, which is a trimmer. And they also show us where that is. In fact, it's a lot better to see on the drawing than here. But I can see it through there. It's that guy over there. And they want uh, 1.33. Hell, I've got 1.33. They want 1.3 volts. Let's see if I can improve that. No, wrong way again. 1.3 volts. Perfect. Not going to get better than that. As I mentioned previously, we're going to do an alignment on this. I don't know how far off it is. But, um, you know, things have been messed around with, with the capacitors and, uh, and the dial and everything else. When that's been messed around with, you can probably bet somebody's done something else. I hope so anyway. It always is great to get uh, a great improvement here. So let's have a look at what the setup is. The I frequency for this is 460 kilohertz for the AM bands. So I have a 460 kilohertz signal coming out of there. It's modulated with a tone, uh, an audible tone. What is it? One kilohertz. Depth of 30, 40 percent, doesn't matter. And the amplitude at the moment is 20 millivolts and I'll show you why. They tell us to use the uh, rod antenna. So I've got a coil of wire here. The signal generator signal is going into there. It's just a coil. It's going to basically transmit the signal and the antenna picks it up. The amplitude that you have on the signal generator will depend on just what sort of tone you hear. The closer you get this to the, to the uh, rod, the better, or the louder. So we'll just leave it there and see how far we got. I'm measuring the audio signal, the actual audio, on an AC uh, millivolt meter, or voltmeter. At the moment it's on 1 volts RMS. We'll see where we need to put it to get the best indication. The radio has medium wave selected. The tuning capacitor is all the way open, according to the instructions. And the volume, I'll put it up high, um, high enough to be able to hear the tone. I've got the speaker connection going to the dummy load so we can hear it or take it off. And um, it makes it easier to measure the output with the voltmeter. According to the instructions, they tell us to feed that signal in. And we need to adjust coils or transformers 6 to 10. Now 6 to 10 is basically the IF chain, which we can quite easily identify on this schematic. So if you go through each one of those um, IF sections, it's got FM and AM. The uh, coils 6 to 10 handle the AM section. And if we look at the uh, drawing of the back of the uh, radio, they identify quite clearly where these coils are. Okay, let's get the show on the road. Put this on. 
We can hear it, so I'm going to put it on dummy load and we'll watch the voltmeter. And 6 to 10. So 6 is that guy over there. Oh dear, it was peaked. 6, 7 is the one below. Oh, 6 was the top one, sorry. Anyway, it's, I did 7 first. Not much difference there. So 6 and 7. 8 is that guy over here. That's peaked. 9 is that one down here. These are very easy to turn. The reason I thought someone messed with it is that there's no wax. Okay, got a bit out of that one. And 10 is that one over there. Got a bit more out of that one. And that, my friends, is it. That's the IF alignment of the AM. Pretty simple because everything is very accessible and quite easily identified on the, uh, on the drawings. So what do I do next? Well, I think what I'm going to do next is do an RF alignment for the AM because that um, dial had been moved quite dramatically. Now, for the RF alignment of the medium wave, you put it on medium wave, uh, you put this on narrow so you don't push this down. This is the bandwidth. You put this on that marker, which we can just see on the underside. I can see it. It's over here. You put it on there. That's the 550 kilohertz range. You send a 550 kilohertz signal, still going through, the, uh, through that coil instead of directly into the radio. And now we need to adjust coils 4041. Now 4041, I believe, is this one here. It's uh, indicated there, but it's two coils, so I think this outer ring is one and the inner one is another. I'm not sure, but I'm going to put the tone on. Damn, I've just moved the, the dial. I'm going to put the tone on so that I can hear it. It's slightly off. Let's see if we can get it closer. That's just making a heck of a lot of noise. Let me just bring it in slowly. There we go. That's noisy. I know the meter. I'm going by the sound. Maybe this thing is too strong, this signal. Let me drop that. Let's see what we get here. Yeah, that's optimally tuned. Okay. They also tell us to adjust L21, which is this guy over here. There's a bit of wax, which I'm going to break away here. I need to scrape that off. Because it might need to go further in. Let's see if I can do this very carefully. Put the sound off. Okay, we're good to go. That's a max. I'll then put a little bit of wax on there. 
So that's the 550. Now we've got to do 1500. Now they tell us to set it on the mark for 1500. Set the uh, transmitter to 1500. And we've got to adjust capacitor 42 and 22 for maximum output. Now the 1500 mark is over here. I can just see it. That'll be it there. Set the meter to the uh, signal generator to 1500. It's just slightly off. I just want to check this again. No, that is spot on. So the oscillator is fine, but I would need to adjust 42 and 22, which is that one there and that one up there. Now 42, I think, is the oscillator. I'm just listening to it. You probably can't hear it, but it's now on the peak and now here I'm going to go for maximum. It's pretty much peaked. Nothing to it. No change. So now what I'll do is I'll go back to 550, check it again, and the medium wave will be done. Now for long wave they tell us to set this on the 210 kilohertz mark, which I've done. I've got the transmitter sending 210 kilohertz. And it's pretty spot on, but I'll just see if I can adjust it. They tell us to adjust C45 and L and this coil here. So C45 is that guy up there. Can I reach it? Seems to be this guy here. No change. And L24, this guy over here, which I need to change with a stick or something because my finger is having an effect on it. I'm just adjust adjusting it for where it sounds best, and that seems to be it. The noise is actually making that voltmeter jump all over the place, so I can't really rely on that. But that is the um, long wave done. To align the 49 meter band, they tell us to connect a 6.1 megahertz signal with a 5 picofarad capacitor to the rod. Now, I'm just wrapping this around here. It's probably more than 5 picofarads. You don't need to do more than that. And I've tuned it in there. Put a bit of volume. I can, I can hear it. Okay, so now I need to find that mark there that's supposed to be for 6.1 and it's the little ball. Damn, this is tough to see. There's a little marker here. There it is. Okay, so it has to come to the left. It's quite a bit off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it slowly. I'm not going to put it there because I wouldn't know where to go. So I'll put it here. There's the peak. I put it here, and now I've got to go a bit more, but I'm going to slowly, slowly get it in tune. And the coils for that are 36, 38, and 15. So it is that one down there, and that one up there. So let's start. Okay, I'm going to go further to the left, to the right. That's on the button. Okay, that's done. Now this one for a peak. That made a small difference there. Okay, we're done. That's the only alignment for the 49 meter band. Shortwave 2, or rather the, sh the main shortwave band, 
they tell us to put it on 7.5 megahertz and we tune to the 7.5 marker which is again if I could see it over here it's very close to where the 550 was just off you can just see it it's just off so again I'm going to drag it because the ones I need to adjust are 11, 12, 31, 33 and that is 11, 12 is this guy over here Is that the oscillator? I don't think so Thirty-one, thirty-three. Okay, so it's these two. That seems to be the oscillator. I need to adjust it just a bit more. There it is. And then this one for a maximum. The volume a bit down. Okay, that's beaked. I was just watching the meter there. So that's done for the uh, 7.5. And then we go up to 17.5 on the signal generator. 17.5 megahertz and we have to adjust it to the respective spot on there which is a little ball right at the end there if I could see it again oh, I can see it just got to get to the right angle put some volume up see if we find it I can't find it. Oh, that was off. Idiot. I put the uh, signal generator off for some reason. Okay, there it is. But is it on the ball? No, it's slightly off. Again, I'm going to drag it, put it just off the tone, and pull it towards where I want it to go a little bit, and then maximum, maximize the tone, and then keep doing that. Now that one is C32 and C12. That's on the other side. That's that one there. Jeez, just touch it. It's gone the wrong way. Maybe it isn't that one. It could be just peaking it, but not the oscillator. C12, let's try C12. C12 is that guy there. Yeah, that's the oscillator. That's moving it along the dial. That's it. 
that's done. Now I'll peak this one as well. Whoa, that was a little bit more tricky because it's very sensitive. So that is done. Right, so the AM alignment stuff is done, the IF alignment been, has been done, the RF alignment has been done. I really like those little marks on there. I think it's a brilliant idea. That was very, very useful. I was actually a little surprised that we didn't get a better improvement on especially the IF. I thought someone had tampered more on it. Unfortunately, they didn't. And I say unfortunately, because it's always very gratifying when you get a, a major boost, a major improvement, which we didn't get here. One thing I do, I am aware of is that um, although we've uh, aligned the top of the band and the bottom of the band for most of these, because of the fins that were changed or tampered with over there, the tracking across the band might not be exact, but I'm not concerned with that because look at the thickness of that needle. You know, if you want to get a, a, a particular frequency, this is not the radio for that. It's not uh, precise. So we're good with that. And now I just have to get myself a cup of coffee and think about what to do next. Let's talk about FM. If you recall, when I engaged FM on here, that gear is engaging correctly. I can see it, but this thing was getting jammed up and it wasn't moving across. I also noticed that the little spring that sort of tightens the two ends of the dial cord together was hitting the end way before this thing reached the end. Then I realized I don't know where the end is. I don't really know where the end is because this uh, tuning condenser, the dial cord around it, doesn't catch on it. It slips across it. It's not like the other ones where the ends of the dial cord end inside there. Fortunately, because you can't get in there. So I decided to go and look further and see what the heck was going on here. You see, I wanted to know where this thing is hitting. Where's the end of this thing? Okay. And can you feel it? In other words, this tuning condenser in here, there's a little condenser in there. That thing there is connected to the shaft of that condenser. So it could have been slipping. And I had no way of really figuring it out and figuring out what the hell was wrong with the dial cord. There might have been a knot in it or something. So I did the unthinkable. I took it out. I took out the dial cord and the spring. And this thing is now got no dial cord on here. <laughs> I have no idea how I'm going to get it back. I've got the instructions, but this thing is tight in there, I can tell you. However, it did serve to discover something. And that is, I can now feel the end of the turn. And if I turn it across, I can feel the opposite end. It stops. Which is what it's supposed to do. There, it stopped. Okay. The other thing I know is that this thing is receiving quite well. <laughs> Tuning isn't easy. This thing has actually got some very good reception, very good sound. And what I did is I took my uh, ELV signal generator, the stereo FM signal generator, this thing over here, and I set it to 88, which is at the bottom, and I sent out a, uh, a one kilohertz tone, okay? And I put this nearby, I put a little bit of wire coming out of there, this acts sort of as an antenna. Basically this acts as a transmitter. I did a video on this way back, I'll link it above. It works very well, it's great for this sort of thing. So I sent a signal at 88 and I picked it up at one end and then I started going up. And I started going up on frequencies here as well, following the signal up. In other words, following it up the band to make sure that I can track it and tuning along there as I was doing that, okay, tuning like this. And then I got to the end and figured out where the end of this thing was. Guess what? It was at 104 point, whatever it was on the screen just now, 0.2 or something. And this radio is supposed to go up to 104. So this thing is working perfectly. The, um, the extension of the band is pretty good, very good actually. And the reception is very good, as I've figured out, obviously with some difficulties in fine-tuning. 
The problem was it wasn't turning where it's supposed to and that's what I'm going to have to do next. So I'm going to have to restring this thing. I've got to make sure this string, this is the proper string and I don't see and I don't see any knots on here. So there's no reason why this string should get stuck. Just checking again. I feel no knots at the end here. So the string is here. The length should be fine. I'm going to follow the uh, diagram which they give in the service manual and somehow try and get it through. One thing I've learned is uh, sometimes the best way to string this through is to use solder. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but if you think about it, solder is a very manageable hook. So you can bend this any way you want. Go up there, grab the string, you know, like that, and then you can pull it down and it just pulls out. So when I say solder, I don't mean in the hot version. I mean as a guide, sort of as a, as a dial cord guide. And it really does work for me. I'm sure somebody else has got better ideas, but that's the one I'm using. And that's what I'm going to do next. I'll work on putting that um, dial string back. Make sure this thing is working properly. Make sure we're getting the tuning properly. It could be as simple as putting it back and it'll work or someone wrapped one too many turns on here or something like that. Or there's something wrong with this, but I don't see it. I don't see anything wrong with this at all. So that's what I'll do next. And then, of course, I'll have to just check the uh, alignment of the FM. And, and then I've got to put the case back together and show you the result. And then we'll be finished. But this thing's going on for a while, so I'm going to take a break now. And I'll get back to you real soon. So once again, I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.